Thanks for tuning in to CS Breakdown. Kareem Hamazni here. In this video, we're going to go over basic algorithm analysis. We're going to cover the difference between big O notation, omega notation, and theta notation. We're going to look at some simple examples of looping algorithms to help us determine what the big O notation is of them. So let's dive in. All right, welcome to this episode of CS Breakdown. Today we're going to go over simple algorithm analysis part one. So we're just going to look at a few basic examples, nothing that includes recursion just yet. In the next video we're going to go over some more deeper examples that include recursion as well as master's theorem. So let's get started. So why do we want to analyze an algorithm? Well, let's say you have a task of being in city A and you want to get to city B. You have a lot of transportation options available to you. You could walk, you could ride a bike, you could take the city bus, drive a car, or even fly. Some of these make sense over others. So for example, if you literally lived across the street from city B, you could simply just walk over and that'd make a lot more sense than flying over. But if city B was across the country, it'd probably make a lot more sense to buy that plane ticket instead of riding your bike. In computing, algorithms are the same thing. So let's look at sorting, for example. If you want to sort a number of items from smallest to largest, you have a lot of different tools available to you, such as the insertion sort, selection sort, quick sort, quick sort binary, bubble sort, etc. Our ultimate goal in algorithm design is to complete the tasks that we want to efficiently. And by efficiently, we mean that it's quick in terms of time, as well as efficient in terms of space because memory is limited in a computer system we can't have the space fill up really quickly so by analyzing algorithms we can compare them and then depending on the task we can pick the best one so what is running time analysis well we want to determine the running time increases related to the size of input so as input gets bigger we want to see exactly what that does to the running time Input is n values. Now we can't make any assumptions regarding n. In fact, we can't assume that n will always be small. It's probably best to assume that n would be adequately large. So with running time analysis and not making assumptions for n, this may creates for a timeless concept that translates from old computing systems to modern machines. So let's look at some definitions. So the rate of growth is the rate at which running time increases as a function of input. Lower order terms, so when a given approximation of the rate of growth of a function, we tend to drop the lower order terms as they are less significant to higher order terms. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here we have a function. n cubed is a higher order term than n, which is a lower order term. So for simplicity's sake, when doing big O notation, we drop the lower order term of n. Therefore, the function has a big O of n cubed. Now let's look at that in layman's terms. Let's say you were to buy a house, and along with the house, you were to purchase a lock. If you spent $400,000 on the house, but only $1.99 on the lock, if someone asked you, hey, how much did you get your new house for? You would unlikely say $400,001.99. You'd likely say just $400,000. Because the $400,000 is significantly larger than the $1.99, it's safe to put less significance on that $1.99 like we do with lower order terms. There are th three major ways to analyze an algorithm. There's the worst case, the best case, and the average case. The worst case is the longest time, and it's represented by big O notation, which is drawn like this. The best case is the least amount of time, and average case is the average amount of time. Best case is denoted by omega notation, and it's written like this. Average case is denoted by theta notation, and it's written like this. Most of the time, we do use the big O notation because it's the most practically useful one of the three. Best case, we can't always rely on because it's not always gonna be the best case. And average case uh, is, is uh, less useful than the worst case. So what we always think about is to plan for the worst and hope for the best. So with big O, once again, we hope for the best and plan for the worst. So let's look at this function here. Let's determine what its big O notation is. 
Let's define the highest order term as g of n. So what is g of n in the above equation? Well, g of n is equal to n to the power of 4. So the function of big O of g of n is big O of n to the 4. Is it always best to use big O notation? Most of the time, yes. However, if big O of n is equal to omega of n is equal to theta of n, then we tend to use theta of n. It's just a formality and it's widely practiced. So let's now look at some examples of algorithms and determining what their big O notation is. So if we look at this simple for loop here, on the inside there's a constant operation, a simple addition. On the outside, there's a loop that happens n times. So our function is the constant times n, which is the amount of times that it happens. The leading constant is typically ignored. So our function has big O of n. Let's look at another example. Now this one's slightly different. We notice that the constant operation is still the same in this. However, the loop goes to n over 2 times, so it doesn't quite reach n. So our function is c times 1 half times n. The c and the 1 half are constants, and the n is the loop. And remember, the leading constants are ignored, so our function of n running time is big O of n. Even though the loop iterates half as much as the last example, there's still both O of n. Now let's look at something more interesting. So we have our constant time operation in the middle that happens n times thanks to this inside loop. That whole package on the inside happens another n times because of the other loop. So our function is c times n times n. c is the constant, the first n is the inner loop, and the last n is the outer loop. We can simplify this by having f of n is equal to c times n squared. And we can drop that constant, giving us big O of n squared. Now let's look at consecutive statements, statements that are one, on th one after the other. Let's label the top part as 1 and the bottom part as 2. We see that the top one, number 1, is a single loop operation, and the bottom one is nested loops. So writing out the formula, we have f of n is equal to c times n plus c times n times n. The c times n is the number 1, and the c times n times n is the number 2. We can simplify this by merging those two ends at the end and putting, them, putting a square symbol above. And we notice that c times n squared is the higher order term in this case, and that's what takes precedence, so that the function of n has a big O of n squared. Now let's look at an if-then-else statement. And let's build it as we go through. So looking at the statement, we have a constant in the if condition. So that's a c0. If the if condition is met, then another constant occurs. That's c1. However, with the else, there's actually a loop, looping structure on the inside that goes to n. And an inner loop inside of that first looping structure that goes to n, as well as a constant. Simplified, the function now looks like this. c0 plus c1 plus c2 times n squared n squared is the higher order term here, so our f of n has a big O of n squared. So those are just a few examples of how to analyze some simple algorithms. Now here are some tips when analyzing. Be mindful of where loops start and end, especially for nested loops. If the best case, average case, and worst case are equal, use theta. And know your orders when looking for the highest order. This is something that's good to practice and good to understand. So which term is the highest order in the following equation? If we look at this, we have f of n is equal to n factorial plus 2 to the 2 to the n. Now n factorial we know can get really big at relatively high values of n. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily look like 2 to the 2 to the n is, would be bigger than n factorial for a large enough given n. But actually, when we graph it, we see that the red line here, which is 2 to the 2 to the n, is a lot greater and rapidly increases faster than the n factorial, which is represented by the blue line. Therefore, the highest order term in there is 2 to the 2 to the n, giving this function a big O of 2 to the 2 to the n. 
Thank you for watching. Go to csbreakdown.com for more, subscribe to our videos, and like this. Bye.